Hi, I'm Ian. And I'm Jason. And this is Ghosts and Bears, the only podcast where we bring you the actual ghost stories with the actual history in the actual place. On this episode of Ghosts and Bears, we're heading downtown on Government Street, which is the main street, and it holds uh, a lot of haunted buildings. We're going to check out two of them coming up on this episode of Ghosts and Bears. Hey, thank you for joining us. Here we are back at it. We have had... uh, Quite the two weeks, we um, went on our little uh, journey, as we talked about last time, and then on the weekend after that, we picked up another kitty cat. Um, So Rex has been uh, slowly integrating into the world that is Randy's, (laughs) because let's be honest, you know, dogs have masters, cats have staff, and that is all we are here. But um, it's good. It's it's working out great. They're hanging out together now and playing and they eat out of the same bowl at the same time. And I think that's pretty good for a week. So I'm not going to complain about that. Um, other than that, though, uh, things are, you know, clicking along. Uh, work's picking up. We're getting volunteers back in now that COVID restrictions are lifting. And that's a good thing. Um, but uh, definitely makes for a busier much busier time and then of course uh writing the calgary's most haunted book doing this podcast ghost walks are picking up as uh, tourists return to our fair city and that's what it seemed like the perfect time to do um government street uh government street if you've been to victoria you know um government street is the big kind of main street uh through um through downtown uh it's more touristy now um definitely like without a doubt um but it's it's the kind of road that if you're walking down it you just feel good it's a nice place to be um there isn't going to be you know a whole lot of upsetness um <laughs> it's just a great street it's full of ice cream stores desserts t-shirts all the touristy crap you'd find anywhere else but it's also made up of pretty much all the um heritage buildings uh it's definitely got more heritage buildings than any other um one you know any one uh, building that we have um sorry any one street that we have it's just a great place and everything's within walking distance if you get a hotel on government street and there's only two that are close to it really other than the big ones like uh the empress and and that kind of thing if you're down there you can walk everywhere it's got the best restaurants it's got everything you'd want to see it's also got the maritime museum down there the bug zoo um different historic sites and you know depending what you're into there's pretty much something for everyone now there's escape rooms down there and and all that kind of thing so if it's going to be happening, uh, it's going to be happening on Government Street uh, for sure. In terms of just um, uh, where people are gathering in the summertime, when we were having cruise ships, because uh, it's not a huge area, it's not a big, big street at all. Um, when the cruise ships were coming in, if we had three cruise ships in dock at once, that meant there was an extra 5,000 people downtown, uh, give or take. And it is not a big downtown so it made a substantial difference they would also be running buses up and down there those kind of hop on hop off buses we also have those um pedicabs where they um a guy pulls you around in a, in a two-seater wagon kind of thing and also the bicycle ones as well i'm just trying to give you a picture of what it's like down there especially in the summer Horse-drawn wagons, um, all those kinds of things, which are very controversial right now. Uh, people are saying it's cruel to the horses. And um, so, you know, there's there's a lot going on down there. Mix all that in with the buskers. You've got a working inner harbor with um, a float plane airport. If you've listened to other episodes of this podcast, you know what's going on. Um, there's other things happening as well. And it's just a really busy place. Um, the buskers are amazing. Sometimes you go down there and there's people who you actually really look forward to hearing because they are so good. And uh, as someone who goes down usually a couple times a week in the summer because of ghost walks, I'm always happy to see certain groups down there. Um, one of our most famous, of course, is the Darth Vader who plays the violin. So, you know, that's fun. Why? 
I don't know, but he makes a lot of money. <laughs> um, so yeah, just fun places like that. If you talk to people who live in Victoria, a lot of them never go down there, really. Um, there isn't a lot of reason for the locals to go down there unless they're looking for something specific or a specific restaurant or something. Um, a lot of locals just won't. And since we've had a lot of bike lanes put in, which is great if you are riding your bike a lot, but it means a lot of the parking is gone. And then the other problem was all the vacant lots that used to be a little further out of downtown. Well, they all have giant condo buildings on them now. So you've got this real squeeze going on where people are um, finding nowhere to park and they're just not bothering to come down anymore. So downtown is almost completely reliant on office workers, which of course have been thin on the ground the last two years, uh, and tourists, which have also been thin on the ground the last two years. So it has not been an easy time for um, a lot of the businesses down there. So I just thought it'd be a great way to do this. Both of these stories and actually next episode stories as well um, do appear in Victoria's Most Haunted, my first book, uh, which of course you can pick up wherever wonderful books are, are waiting to be purchased. Um, but uh, hopefully we can give you a little bit extra as well. Now, as for Government Street itself, what I do know about Government Street is it was the first um first big street um west of fort gary it was the first official street um it was pretty cool in terms of how um it came about they put it all together they wanted to uh have a real town quote unquote and so government street went in pretty early on i did find an article um actually written in 1958 um, about Government Street, believe it or not, by a man named Bruce Hutchison. Um, and uh, I thought I would share some of that. He, he wrote, um, it walks from Victoria's seafront like a dowager, turns seductress and merchant, and dies like a tramp. In its two-mile odyssey, it is haunted by gold seekers, a genius eccentrics, and the visionaries who wed Canada to the Pacific. And that really was the crux of it. We were the last stop on the railroad and uh, had worked very hard to get there. It was the first Canadian street built west of the Rockies, um, which literally starts at the ocean. Um, and then it cuts kind of south to the north through the middle of Victoria. And after exactly two miles, it ends. Um, it's got about a quarter mile where we were talking about where everything is. Um it's one of the most notable streets in North America um, because really the boundary um, of the Strait of Juan de Fuca was kind of there as well. So I should explain that geologically we are closer to, or sorry, geographically, <laughs> geologically, <laughs> an earthquake, uh, geographically, it's um, cl we're closer to the United States than we are to the rest of Canada. We can get to the U.S. quicker than we can to Vancouver. And a lot of people don't realize that. Um, and it's because the American-Canadian boundary literally goes down and around the bottom of Vancouver Island. So that's pretty... Uh, uh, pretty key. Uh, and I think that does explain why we do have so many, uh, wonderful American visitors who like to come up and hang out, uh, because there's, you know, quite a bit going on and it, for them feels super close to home because it is. One of the reasons it's so significant, I guess, is because um, there really wasn't anything else going on um, in terms of towns. In 1858, uh, there was uh, Fort Gary, which is Winnipeg now, essentially. And between Fort Gary and the Pacific, there was only Victoria. There was no Vancouver. There was nothing else. There was the odd fort, but um, Victoria was its own town in 1858 and that was huge um <clears throat> in terms of wanting to uh, uh make sure we got all the way to the west they did it um there wasn't a lot there it was a bunch of houses just outside the log palisades of the fort and a huddle of tents um but very quickly i think we've talked about this before in 1858 in a three-month time span it went from 300 people to 30,000 people because of that gold rush so it was a it was a pretty big deal. Um, Government Street had started to uh, build up, and they wanted to use English brick, which of course they had to import from the other side of the world. But it was really important to them that it looked like England. 
<laughs> nice to know some things haven't changed about England. Um, they set up uh, some pretty fine buildings. They nicknamed the bird cages because that's what they look like. And that was their, their seat of government. Um, and then they just had some pretty interesting characters. There's one man whose name was actually John Smith. And he changed his name to Amor de Cosmos. Uh, and he ended up being like the mayor. And at one point, I think he hit premier. Like he really, um, he's a huge spiritualist. He used to hold lots of seances and things like that. And, and had absolutely no problems believing any of it. Um, so the, the, the sort of traveling line was San Francisco, um, Olympia, Washington, and Victoria. That was the run. That was the connection because that's really all that there was. Uh, so when Victoria hit the gold rush, boom, it, it happened big and it happened pretty fast. And while Canada may have come together in 1867, uh, uh, British Columbia did not enter it until 1871, so we weren't super anxious to, to sign up. Um, and we've talked about this before, too. What they were looking for was uh, the railroad would go all the way through and debt forgiveness. That was it. That was really all we were looking for, so that's what we got. Downtown is pretty famous for its hanging baskets everywhere. Um, in fact, I had a friend visiting me one time, and um, we heard a police siren pretty close to us when we were downtown. And I said something off the cuff, like, oh, I wonder what that's about. And he goes, oh, probably one of the hanging baskets is drying out. Um, and yeah, yeah, we definitely have that image. But um, there's just a, a lot of attention and time put into making Government Street as um, friendly and as open and as accessible and as profitable as possible. As a result of this, a number of buildings that went up are still there, which is amazing. Um, the two buildings we're going to talk about specifically, one was built to be um, a bank and the other was built to be a, a store, a shop. Um, and interestingly enough, the bank is now a bookstore and the shop is still a shop for a very, very old Victoria business. The two buildings we're talking about tonight are next door to each other. Um, one was built, it was called the Mahon Building, Mahon Building, and it was built to be a store. Um, and um, it is newer. Um, it was built uh, in 1966, uh, but they did it to match the two buildings on either side, which are original. And actually, we're going to talk about both of those buildings. We're going to talk about one this episode and the other one uh, the next episode. Um, but that building was there. It it uh, has like a three-story frontage. And then in the back, it drops down a whole nother step because, of course, Victoria is built, you know, down, uh, heading down into... Um, into the ocean so there's there's a drop so there is like a, a downstairs um so if you enter from government street you're walking really into the second floor um so that's one of the buildings we're talking about the other building we're talking about as i said was uh built to be a bank it was designed for the royal bank of canada in 1909 by thomas hooper um we've talked about thomas before we nicknamed him the haunted architect because it seems any building he touches Rogers Chocolates, Old Morse Tobacconists, um, this building, uh, they're all haunted. All of them have um, just this whole thing going on. He was, um, he he did a great job on it. The building has coffered 24-foot ceilings. It is stunning. It's gorgeous. Um, they compare it actually to the Great Library of Ephesus built by the Romans in the 2nd century AD. It has these beautiful... Um, tapestries hanging in it there's eight of them um, and also the ceilings are painted it's just wow it's amazing so a man named Jim Monroe bought the building it had been really badly modernized in the 1950s and he wanted to return it to what it used to be um, in only eight weeks they had it refurbished enough and ready for business and since then it has received two heritage awards um, the the business that's been there because it's been there for 50 years now, this building. Um, Jim Monroe and his wife, Alice, his first wife. Um, Alice Monroe is a, is a, I've mentioned this in the story time, you'll hear it again, but pretty famous author here. Um, she has won um, all kinds of awards. Uh, he wanted to have this bookshop. Um, it had a long, narrow space. It was near the movie theaters, but there weren't a lot of bookstores. So he really wanted to do this. In those days, his main competition came from the book sections at local department stores. Uh, 
But the location was convenient for younger movie going customers, as well as all the office staff. And they wanted to see something cool happen. And they developed a really loyal clientele. The uh, store was um, set up and it just, it just was a success right from the beginning. Um, Jim was there until September 2014. And when he passed away, he actually turned the ownership over to four of his long-term staff members, which is pretty cool. Um, it's just a really beautiful building. If you do get to Victoria, I highly recommend going to Monroe's Books. Um, as someone who loves reading, has always loved reading, has always had reading as a wonderful escape as well as a chance to learn. And now someone who has written and sold books, um, Monroe's really is quite unique. Um and that's one of the stories that we're going to be hearing about tonight. So I hope you enjoy that one. And I've got some uh, pictures of the place for our lovely uh, patrons. Um, so you can see what it looks like inside and what it looks like on the outside and what it looked like back in the day. Um, so that's definitely something to look forward to. The other place is Murchies. Uh, Murchies, big deal. Uh, they make... Um, quite they're quite well known for being tea importers um a young man named john murchie used to deliver tea to queen victoria uh, while she was in residence at Belmoral castle in the scottish highlands he became familiar with the kind of teas the queen preferred and as his knowledge of tea grew he started experimenting with blending teas on his own he emigrated to canada and of course settled on the west coast which is where every young man looking to make his fortune would go to and he really took it on. He started Murchie's Tea in 1894 and pretty much became the gold standard. Um, even now, uh, Murchie's Tea is the one that is um, sold at the Empress. There is an Empress blend. Um, and they bring all of their products now um, to their facility in Delta, B.C., and then they have over uh, 130 varieties of tea and 25 different coffees, um, as well as there's a pretty well-established restaurant with a bakery um, that does pastries. And you can even do kind of your own high tea if you want to um, on your own, just in the in the shop. So it's a pretty interesting place. Um, that was the building that was designed to be the um, department store. In the lower level now, um, there is a clothing shop and another shop on the other side. It's very much divided down the middle. The staircase to take you downstairs is smack dab in the back of the middle of the shop. Um, and downstairs too, the one shop's on one side and the other shop's on the other. So I have been in both places. Um, as far as Monroe's goes, I find it, well, absolutely there's something there, um, there's definitely a spirit or at least one, but it's a very comforting thing. It's it's like stepping into a, I don't know how to describe it, like a warm, friendly place where you were, you were welcomed, you were, you, everyone there is happy to see you. Um, it's just got a really good feel. Um, opposite that to Murchie's. <laughs> well, the main floor, eh, it's okay. Um, I've never been comfortable there. It's never been somewhere I've spent a lot of time. Um, but downstairs is where the magic happens in terms of not great feelings. Um, but you're going to hear these stories, um, on this episode and, uh, you will now know more about government street. And when you come for a visit, you're going to have uh, a ready list of places to go and you're going to know what's going on with them. So I'm really happy we can do this. Um, on Government Street, it seems just so appropriate now the weather is opening up and I can't believe all the tourists. I was doing ghost walks on Saturday and we had um, two really large groups um, of people and they were just, everyone's just happy to be out and happy to be there and it's starting to warm up a bit. So that makes it a little easier and yeah, it's just a good time. And remember, if you're coming to Victoria and you want to go on a ghost walk, please let me know ahead of time. Um, I won't know months in advance. I just won't. Um, what happens is I get a, a text or an email kind of this time of the month um, and saying, hey, what's up for next month? What do you want to do? Here's what's available. Um, and that's how we set it up. So the best thing to do, um, I had someone get in touch with me about they're coming in May. And I said, great, let me know beginning of May when you're coming and I can tell you when I'm working um, because I don't want to disappoint anybody, but I also don't want to make any promises I can't keep. So um, 
you know, and if we can't, hey, maybe we can grab copy or something. Uh, depends what's going on for you. Depends what's going on for me and for Jay. So we are going to jump into story time now, and um, we are heading off into the gloomy twilight, which it is as I record this, um, as we head down Garment Street, watch out for the hanging baskets, they water them at night, and they will drop on your head, but be grateful that's the only thing that's doing that. Oh yeah, one time I was downtown, and I was doing a ghost walk, and um, I had a small group, probably 10 people, and I had them under a cover, like under a uh, an awning. And I'm standing at the edge of the awning, and a bird flew over and decided to relieve himself. While I'm telling the story, I got quite a bit of seagull poop, which is, trust me, worse than other poop. Uh, seagull poop, it went down behind my glasses into my eye, and some landed in my open mouth. Oh, yeah, special times. I didn't know what to do, so I just kept talking. And I, as I'm telling the story, I pulled napkins out of my bag, which I always have with me when I do ghost walks. And I wiped my face and my glasses. And I just kept going because what are you going to do? Freak out? Start spitting? There wasn't a sink around. But, yeah, good times. Um, most of the time, it's not quite that exciting, I will be honest. <laughs> Sometimes it can be. The animals and um, the people are, you just can't predict them. You just never know. Anyway, I hope you enjoy it as we wander off now, uh, heading down Government Street. And, uh, you know, don't be scared. We're going to stop at a couple places and there's a few more to see. But we'll get there together right after this. Two stories for you here, down on Government Street, which is where we are. Government Street's kind of the main uh, commercial and now commercial tourist area for downtown. A um, couple streets up from Wharf. But uh, now it's, you know, kind of walk only and that kind of thing. And there's a bunch of buildings down here. We're going to be talking about two of them on this episode. And I'm recording another two stories for another episode but the one thing all these buildings have in common is they are usually built by thomas hooper <laughs> and these ones happen to all be on um government street in fact the two we're talking about today are neighbors they're right next door to each other now home to one of canada's premier bookstores independent bookstores um, this building used to be a bank it was designed in 1909, again, Thomas Hooper. Uh, but when the bank moved in 1963, Jim and Alice Monroe, who's she's quite a famous author here, um, opened a bookshop. Monroe's Books has recently been named the third greatest bookstore in the world. And during its years as a bank, the building saw a bit of a darker history. A young woman who worked at the bank had been slowly and steadily embezzling. And unfortunately for her, she was caught. The bank did not let on that it knew. It simply called the police. And when the police walked into the bank and locked eyes on the young woman, she knew right away why they were there. She ran to the back room where they kept a gun stored just in case they needed to protect the money or protect themselves. She barricaded herself in the room and despite the police entreating her to come out, she took her own life. The back room is accessible by a door in the rear of the building where there's a covered parking garage. On rainy, late-night ghost tours, we'll often go into that garage to tell stories rather than stand out in the rain. One night, a good friend of mine, Aaron, was on the tour and was listening to the story. The shop had been closed for hours. It was almost 11 o'clock, and no one was in the building. He quietly knocked on the door three times, and to his great shock, three knocks came back at him. Aaron looked at his mom, who had accompanied him on the tour, and said, Did you hear that? And his mom had. Aaron then knocked twice and whatever it was, responded by duplicating his knock. At that point, the tour moved on, but ever since then, Aaron has absolutely been a believer. There have also been reports of books coming off shelves, um, much like in our other story of the Park Royal Mall bookstore. They'll come in in the morning and find books on the ground that just seem to inexplicably have peeled off and landed on the floor. 
Sometimes it even seems to be in response to what people are looking for. One woman who I talked to, she came forward with a ghost story of her own. Her name's Cecilia, and she'd been searching for a particular cookbook that her mother wanted and just couldn't find it anywhere. Cecilia went to Monroe's with her friend, and as they headed for the cookbook section, she mentioned to her friend that if she could just find this particular book to make her mom, uh, or make her mom's Christmas complete, she would be so happy as she'd been looking for so long. They arrived in the cookbook section just in time as the a book seemed to gently ease itself off of a lower shelf and fall to the floor. It was the exact cookbook Cecilia had been searching for and had mentioned as she walked through the store. There have been other reports of books coming off shelves, but from what I hear, they were more random or to get attention. There may be other reports of ghostly customer service happening here, but Cecilia's was definitely the most compelling to date. The store next door to it is Murchie's, and Murchie's is a coffee and tea place. Not just any tea place. Um, it was actually an import from New Westminster in the Lower Mainland, where uh, they were hoping it would be the capital of BC, and then we beat them out for it. Uh, John Murchie was a Scottish immigrant who started his life in tea by delivering tea to Queen Victoria while working for a tea company in, in England. John started his own company in Canada in 1894, and the company has never looked back. The building in which they conduct business in Victoria has had some ghostly activity over the years. The front part of the building seems to be generally unaffected, but the back of Murchie's is a very different story. There had been persistent reports by the after-hours security staff, as well as a member of the Murchie staff, of footsteps up and down the stairs. Even when the store is closed and the building is relatively empty, the elevator is called by an unseen presence and travels between floors, in what appears to be a random pattern. In the shop on the left-hand side of this establishment, things have come off shelves and broken, and not only at the hands of clumsy tourists, sometimes they fall completely on their own, even though they're set far back on the shelf. People have also reported hearing doors slam heavily in the lower level when everything is locked up and no one is supposed to be down there. I've been in Murchie's more than once, but I've never felt comfortable there. In the back room of the cafe, on the right-hand side of the building, you will often see people enjoying the various baked goods and sandwiches and cakes and, of course, the varied and famous teas. However, I've never seen anyone relaxed in there, just, or lingering on their own. It's mostly tourists and family groups in that section of the cafe, and no one seems to go in there to unwind. After spending some time in there, I can understand why. I couldn't tell you who is in the back part of that building and enjoys making noise, but there's definitely someone there who doesn't want to let go of their small, haunted area of the Murchie's Cafe. So you've been to Murchie's? What do yeah. you think? Well, I certainly felt the presence there. It feels a little uneasy, but you know. It's more, and this is what I, I ran into and also what I said in the story was about you feel uneasy in kind of the back areas. Yeah. Because one side is the store and the other side you can sit back there and no one ever seems to hang out there. No. But it's downstairs where there's something really quite evil apparently like the workers have experienced it and the cleaning staff are the ones and security people who've mentioned it wow yeah and i wonder i wonder why because that building is the only one in that row that is uh not built in like 1800s early 1900s that building yeah was built in 1966 yeah, it's a lot newer than the rest of them. Yeah. It's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. But that could be the reason why it is. It's disturbed. Oh, like something was there before. Yeah. And this is a remnant. That's what I'm wondering. That's a good theory. That's yeah. actually a really good theory. That's what I notice anyways. On the plus I mean, side, Murchie says great dessert. Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, the dessert there is excellent. I yeah, quite it's enjoy really it. good. We, we need to come back. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Um, so I talked at the top of the podcast about our new cat friend. Yeah. 
Rex. Rex. So it's Rex and Randy. Um, Rexy. Rexy Randy. Rexy and Randy. I started a new um, Instagram account just for them, Rex and Randy. So if you're interested in endless cat pictures, I'm trying to limit them to there. Yeah. And I took some nice photos of Rex. Oh, you did. Oh, my goodness. So, oh. Really great pictures. The one photograph, he seems to be quite popular. Yes. And he actually seems to be quite um, friendly and kind. And really, he just butts Randy out of the way and takes what he yeah. wants. <laughs> he started it. So we got him last Saturday. Um, a gentleman was moving. No, sorry, not moving. No. He's got a new job. Yeah. And he was going to be away kind of 14 hours or 14 days a month. Mm. So he needed somewhere new for Rex to go. And um, we were thinking of getting us. Oh, Randy just jumped on my mm. lap. Uh, we were thinking of getting a new kitten, mm -hmm. a Siamese kitten. It's got to be Siamese because I'm allergic to the rest. And um, we couldn't really find one. And then this ad for Rex came up and he's 18 months old. Um, and he's, you told me something interesting about their heads. Because that's the one way you can tell them apart. Tell me yeah. About that. Well, Randy is more of the, um, what people consider the traditional Siamese because he's a bit more pointy. Like the ones in Lady and the Tramp. Yes, but he's actually not. That was more of a 50s, 60s phenomenon. Randy's a lot less racist. Yeah, and um, uh, Rex is actually more of the proper traditional Siamese with what's called an apple head. Apple head. <laughs> yeah, so he's a little rounder. He um, is. A little rounder, a little flatter. Yeah. Um, oh, Randy's purring up his storm now. <laughs> Randy is happy. Um, so for the first few days, Rex hid. Yes, he did. Behind yeah. everything. And yeah. when he would come out, Randy would go. <sighs> yeah, he did. He did that a lot. Um, but not, there was no physical fight. It wasn't aggression. It was fear. I think um, it was fear from both sides. Because well, they're Randy both very scared. easy going. Yeah. But we didn't hear a single noise out of Rex for the first four days. No. <laughs> Um, and then he would sort of peek out every once in a while and run for the food dish and <laughs> run for the litter box and then run away again. But now, um, Randy and Rex are, buddies. they're playing, they're playing, they're chasing, they're eating out of the same dish at the same time. Actually, Rex had butts Randy out of the way. That's fair. And takes what he wants. I would too. And then there's a third type of Siamese called a wedge, wedge head or whatever. And wedge. what's that? They're very triangular. Oh, oh, that's more like the ones on Lady and the Tramp. No, no, Ran, uh, Randy is. No, they're very triangular. Oh. They look like a triangle. Hold on. <laughs> I'm trying to get Randy's um, purring recorded. I don't know if it worked or not. I have no it. idea. Um, so, oh, yes. okay, they're more triangular, more angular. But they're more, they have more issues with regard to breathing and what have you. Oh, oh right. And Randy's headbutting the mic. Yeah, he's going now. <laughs> Okay, once once he starts headbutting the mic, he's done. Um, yeah, and uh, Rex is a lot looser. He's a lot more. Yes. He's bonier. Like Randy's kind of a chonk. Like, yeah, Rand Randy has <laughs> some weight. He's got a but snap. he's he's the correct size basically because right. male Siamese I think can hit eighteen pounds and Randy's fifteen. Whoa. Yeah, they can be big cats. But Rex is longer than Randy, like yes. quite a bit longer. Yeah, he's a long boy. Yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah. No, it's cool. <laughs> Not to be confused with the lawn boy. <laughs> well, speaking of racist. <laughs> um, no, it's really cool to see um, see them actually get along and not have to worry about them and all those good things. I'm mm -hmm. happy. And, they're, and, you know, everyone's like, oh, Siamese, they must be so loud. Not really. No. Um, feeding time? Yes, yes. They've got something to say. Uh, but otherwise, no, we don't really hear from him. No. He did go off one night. It was about 3.30 in the morning, and Randy went off. Like, yes, he did. Like yeah, a siren. Yeah. And I'm like, what the heck is wrong with that cat? And I mean, I could have gotten up to check. Yes. But I didn't. And then we had an earthquake. We had an earthquake at about 4 a.m. Yeah, yeah, half an hour later. So Randy, Randy knew. Up. He knew. He knew. So listen to your pets. It's surprising what they know, because he sounded like he was dying. Yeah, you know, that makes it sound even worse that neither of us got up to check on him. <laughs> well, no, I, I, I was dead asleep. I didn't even hear him. Oh, I heard him, and I'm like, uh, if he's making that much noise, he can't be that hurt. <laughs> well, and then the earthquake happened, and, I, and earthquake I slept happened. through it. Yeah, yeah, I did too, but oh well, now we know. Um, So the other place we were talking about was Monroe's Books, mm -hmm. and you've been in there with me. Yeah, and what a you couple think? times. What do you think of that place? Oh, it's it's busy with books. <laughs> it's know, busy with books. There's a lot. I also uh, said it's a 
kind energy in there. I agree. Yeah. It's yeah. not a bad energy. No, it's not. I, I, I feel comfortable there. Yeah. But when I say it's busy with books, uh, the aisles seem narrow compared to other bookstores. Oh, they are. It's a very long, narrow space. Yeah. Um, it goes all the way to the very back where it used to be the bank offices. That's the kids section now. Mm -hmm. um, I always think of it a bit like you're entering into a cathedral of books. Because the roof is so yeah, high, high and painted yeah. and beautiful. And that makes sense. I yeah. think it's one of the prettiest buildings down on Government Street, actually. Mm -hmm. yeah. I agree. Yeah. No, it's really pretty. But the energy there is nice. Mm -hmm. And that's sometimes people say that book a book falls off, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And I'd imagine that. Yeah, for sure. Well, it reminds me of what Lisa was talking about when we talked with her in Park Royal Mall. Mm -hmm. And she worked at the bookstore. And every morning, one of their jobs was to come in. And put all the books back on the shelves that had been knocked off overnight. Which yes. really couldn't have come off because the shelves were t tilted backwards. Yeah, that's right. That's so, right. I remember that. It's probably the same thing. <laughs> I hear that. So, I think we've... Um... <laughs> Ian's laughing because I... <laughs> Might have let out a little gas. It oh, doesn't smell, my God. It doesn't smell very pleasant. Were you Sorry. hoping I wouldn't notice? Well, no. Sweet baby Jesus. <laughs> Sorry. It smells like a pack of llamas walked in here. Oh, no. <laughs> it's embarrassing. Uh, <laughs> no, what's embarrassing is what I did this weekend to the chicken. Hmm. I was very unhappy on Saturday. Oh, yeah. So we had a weekend full of working. Yeah, it was good. It was it busy. was great. We got so much done. We finally got pictures hung up after two years after the reno. Yeah, some paintings are up. Yeah, we got a lot of stuff done. But uh, we had a friend come for dinner, and uh, I was gonna make barbecue chicken. So I got the giant flat of chicken thighs from Costco, mm -hmm. as you do. And I'm excited because I'm gonna cook. I'm gonna just barbecue all of them, and then we'll have them to eat during the week as well. So I got the rice on. Got the vegetables roasting. Everything mm -hmm. was good. I go out to f fire up the barbecue, and what did I find? <sighs> the rats have chewed away at the brand new barbecue. They've chewed and on the knobs. They've chewed on the cupboard doors. Anywhere, yeah. basically, where there's been any splatter in yeah. terms of food. Um, they are wretched things. They are wretched things. So uh, that was number one. And this is a this is a Napoleon barbecue. It was expensive. Yeah, no, it was really nice. Um, so I was really unhappy about that. So anyway, and I it's get it brand all, new. I know, two years. We've had it two years. So I'm getting it all cleaned up, and I get it cleaned up, and I fire it up and burn off any creepy little rat feet prints left behind, and um, I go to uh, put the chicken on. I put it on, turn the barbecue right down, so it can just cook. And I'm in the house for maybe three or four minutes because I'm getting other stuff done. Mm -mm. And uh, I can see Randy pushing his way onto your lap there. And um, I go back out because there's an awful lot of smoke and everything is burned. Yeah. The entire tray of chicken thighs are, Caught now, fire. are now blackened. <laughs> um, I literally walked in the door. Jay was sitting in the, in the kitchen. Um, I was thinking there was love with our dinner fresh guests. smoke. And I walk in and I look I look like I'm ready to kill someone and I what did I say to you? I don't remember. Really? <laughs> well, we need to get Chinese. But that's exactly pizza. what I said to you. I walked in and I said order Chinese. So Order pizza, order Chinese. Yeah. Randy. Yeah. So what we did was we ordered a few select Chinese dishes and we still had the rice and the veggies, so that made me happy. What is he doing? He is really here. I'll throw Being him ridiculous. Go away. No, let go of me. Ah, now he's got me. Yeah, he's not letting go. Go. It's weird. All right. Sorry, listeners. Yeah, he, Randy's being Satan. He apparently wants this to be the Randy show. <laughs> he always does. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so then, uh, not to be defeated, because I'm cheap and I hate wasting food, I pulled off all the burnt bits, because mm -hmm. the chicken actually underneath was done really well. Yeah ironically it takes it takes burning the skin it takes burning the skin apparently so i pulled all the skin off and i pulled it off i pulled the meat off and i pulled all the burnt bits off threw it in the crock pot threw in a bunch of um chicken stock and boom mm -hmm. i made chicken thigh soup 
Yeah, it was really good. Oh, good thing we had it for the last two nights. <laughs> yeah. And I had it for lunch. Did you really had it for lunch, too? I had it for lunch. I'm so sorry. You've eaten nothing but that stupid soup for the last two days. It was good. Oh, I'm I glad. like it. You're so kind. I was not happy. Maybe that's why you're farting so much. The burnt chicken that's so soup. That's so embarrassing. <laughs> sorry to our listeners. Uh, oh, my gosh. Hey, I hope you're laughing. At least they can't smell it. That's true. <laughs> this is not a smell vision <laughs> smell listen that's not cool oh my goodness um we are going to say thank you to our yes. loyal supporters thank you very um much. we are so grateful to all of our patreon friends um if you don't know yet which i'm not sure how you couldn't we do have patreon you just go to mm, um, yeah. patreon.com backslash ghosts and bears and you can see the different levels there there is very cool merch that comes yeah with that. And merch been, is fun yeah i've been popping pictures out on instagram everyone um, wants merch of people with their people with their cool merch um and also um thank you to our new patreon people we yes, had a few you. new people so thank you um we are going to yeah so check out the levels once we hit 50 um patrons we're going to be doing, um, with Alex and Chris, we're going to be shooting a backyard video. Yeah, that'll be fun. And that ties into the episode of Ghosts in My House, where we talked about our house on mm -hmm. Halloween. You will have a video tour of the backyard we were talking about. Yeah, so, it's an interesting backyard. It's very cool. And I'm hoping Barry will let us go in his backyard. I'm sure he will. Oh, I'm sure he will. He's a nice guy. So thanking our patrons, they are Alexa. Debbie. Jackie, Charlotte, Julie, Ruth, Rebecca, Mary Frances, Cassie, Gina and Victoria, Sandy, Christopher, David, Ashley, Jeremiah, Mamere, Elizabeth, Bibi Nix, Melinda, Jordan, Tammy, James, Taya, Evan, Arwin, Steve, Kyle, Catherine, Mari, Mari, Christy, and Christy. Thank you so <laughs> he, much. He tricked me. <laughs> Thank you so much, Thank you guys. You very much. So we are really, really grateful. And in fact, we were able to use a little bit of that money and purchase for ourselves new office chairs for our yes, studio space. So thank you for that. We're very grateful for that. The other ones are pretty crappy. Yes, these yeah. ones are a lot nicer. And well, I figure if I'm going to have to sit for the next few months writing a new book, I better have a good chair because it's just not going to end well. This is exciting. And thank you very much for picking up the slack for the last couple episodes as some of you may know i got a promotion at work and it's been yeah you know, it's a year in account oh year yeah no, in no, accounting no. yeah so next week we'll well by the sixth day i'll have to close the books mm, yeah. for You're getting there. You're getting there. for year end so we close the books and then we close the books yeah. that's kind of how it goes you'll get so there the next couple of weeks are gonna be really busy but yeah. i've been learning the job for a couple of months i'm starting to get used to it you're so. good at it you're thank you fine. it's fun <laughs> So something came across uh, one of my socials and it caught my attention because I thought this was really interesting. So mm -hmm. I thought what I'd do is just read this to you yeah. and then you let me know what you think. Okay. Oh, sure. Okay. It's a story out of England. Um, the strange tale of the A3 ghost crash has been urban legend now in Surrey for nearly 18 years. Going back to December 11th, 2002, it was the day after the Surrey police press team's Christmas party a day which I'm sure they would hope would be a little quieter than usual. But this was not to be. A call came in to Surrey Police that a member of the public reported seeing a car lose control and leave the A3 motorway around 100 meters before the emergency slip road at Burpham. <laughs> Burpham. Sorry. Hmm. Uh, it, seems, uh, it seemed a regular call, yet when officers turned up at the scene, they couldn't find any evidence of the crash. That's interesting. Finally... Police found a maroon Vauxhall Astra nose down in a ditch nearby covered in undergrowth. There was just one thing amiss. The car had remained undiscovered at that scene for five months. And even more concerning, a body lay nearby. Wow. The body was identified from dental records as that of 21-year-old Christian... Christopher, Christopher Brian Chandler, who was wanted for robbery and had been on the run from the Metropolitan Police since July 16 of that year. Wow. The national press suggested that the sighting of the car leaving the road just the night before could only have been a ghostly replay of the fatal crash earlier in the year. 
However, the police disagreed. Oh, shocker. A spokeswoman insisted that the incident had only ever been treated as a regular road traffic collision and the fact that the car was obscured by leaves and branches most probably prevented it from being reported earlier. Wow. What do you think? Interesting. Now, I, I think it might be quite real. Well, I've heard of stories like this before yeah, where... Yeah. Um, Poor guy gets replayed in his crash over yeah, and over again. Yeah, and that's just it. There's mm-hmm. like a replay thing going on. So... I do wonder about that, and I wonder if, yeah, maybe there's just more to it. Hmm. I don't know. Now, normally, we would put this kind of ghost story on our patron-only show, which we drop yeah. every other week called Ghost Stories We Have Heard. But this one, I don't know. It caught me for some reason. That is fun. Um, it's probably needs to be examined by the temporal mechanics department. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ridiculous. I also wonder, though, if other people have seen this. Like, is it just the one person? Or has this call come in more than once? I don't know. Because you hear that quite a bit, too. Hmm. Yeah. I remember hearing one about um, if you park your car and put baby powder on the bumper um, in this one spot, your car will get pushed. Oh, it's right by the... It's coming back to me. It's right by the, the, the railroad lines. Mm-hmm. If you park on the railroad lines... Mm-hmm. In a certain spot, and it's somewhere, I forget where, but your car will get pushed. And when you go to the car, you can see little hands on the bumper, little handprints. And um, the story goes, the school bus broke down on the railroad track and the train hit the kids. and That's... Kid jam all over the inside of the bus. Not good. I don't recommend trying that. No. No, I'm not really into that either. (laughs) (laughs) That would be interesting, though. Weird, eh? Interesting phenomenon. Yeah. Yeah, I know. So, I don't know. It just, anyway, it caught my attention. And um, the only other thing to report from uh, our house is there's been a bit more noise since we got Rex. And I don't mean that from yeah, it has cats. Actually. I mean, there's been thumping. Randy and Rex are in our laps. Yeah. And we heard, were here hear thumping, thumping upstairs. That is odd. Yeah. I have heard it, yes. I'm not freaked out by it. It, no. doesn't, it doesn't feel bad. No. But. I think the addition of the new little kitty cat has definitely... Provokes something, because yeah. yes, I certainly have heard the thumping upstairs. Yeah, yeah. Have you heard it when no one else is here? Yep. Yeah. I just ignore it. Oh, that's what I do, too. That's uh, Jason and I's intre- intrepid yeah. ghost hunter moves. <laughs> what did you do then? Ignore it. Uh, acknowledge it, right? I mean, what, what can we do? But yeah, the boys have been downstairs, and I do hear it upstairs. I'm yeah. Like, that's interesting. It's not your mom wandering around her. No, it's not. Well, <laughs> it happened this weekend. I know. There's no was, way. She was away. So. She was away. Yeah, pretty weird. Hmm. There we go. Things, things that make you go, things, hmm. Oh, that's a 90s reference, eh? Oh, yes. I guess it would be. <laughs> what, didn't we just figure out that one of your favorite songs is 35 years old this weekend or something? No, oh, one of them. Yeah. yeah. Bizarre. And um, someone told me, oh, I remember I told you that that one song you were listening to. I'm like, this is considered classic music now. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, but I was just listening to that at the high school dance. Dance Mix 92. Oh, God. <laughs> Club I, Cuts with a K. I, I did actually meet Rick the Tenth. That was kind of cool. Wow. That would have meant something. Much music. That would have meant something back in the day. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for sticking yes, with thank us. Thank you so and, much. Um, we look forward to our next episode already because yeah. I, I got to record all four stories. So we'll be chatting about that for our next episode. But in yeah. the meantime, I hope you've enjoyed uh, Government Street Part 1. Yes, absolutely. And if you do get to Victoria, hey, we'll meet you and go for coffee at Murchie's. Yeah, it's fun. It is fun. Murchie's is nice. And then we'll go to Monroe's and buy all my books. I was looking at Murchie's coffee today. Oh. Yeah, I was looking at buying some. Oh, were you at Hillside Mall? Yes, I was at Hillside Mall. Yeah, because there's the traditional old store downtown. yeah. And now they've opened up one in uh, Hillside Mall. I didn't know if it was still there. No, it's there. Cool. Nice. It seemed a little pricey. Yeah, yeah. Frankly, if you're famous for tea, mm-hmm. I don't think I need to buy coffee from you. Yeah, I prefer tea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if they had any desserts, that would have been a welcome thing to bring home. Speaking of desserts, don't we have a cake? <gasps> we have a carrot cake dancer. We bought it for the guy coming over for dinner, and then we forgot <laughs> yes. to give it to him. Oh, sorry, Fernando. Sorry, Fernando. Oh, my god. We certainly drank all the wine, though. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good. All right, everybody. Thank you, thank so, you so much. much. And we look forward to hearing from you. Please don't forget to um, give us a five-star rating on um, 
iTunes. Yeah, please and, do. And um, do send us your own stories or stories you come across. We love, love to hear them. Oh, my gosh. I love it. It makes me so happy. And we are going to be recording later on a new episode of uh, Ghost Stories We Have Heard. So that will be coming up for our patrons very, very soon. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, um, please, whenever you're thinking about podcasts, keep in mind, we're the only podcast that gives you the actual ghost story. The actual history. In the actual place. And hopefully one day soon, my place will be with you. Take care, guys. Take care. Goodbye. Have a wonderful day. Bye.